Okay. Uh, good afternoon again. Um, my name is uh, Alex Simanovic, and uh, I'm Drupal leader in uh, my organization. Uh, I've been uh, working for the last five years uh, for building Drupal expertise and uh, in my organization, and today I'm responsible for delivery uh, of, of all Drupal projects. And uh, today I would like to tell you uh, our story, uh, how we uh, building large-scale projects for large enterprises, um, which has uh, own specifics and uh, a few interesting things. So, um, since the beginning, since the beginning, we've been focused on uh, very you know complex solutions. For 20 years, we developed uh, very different, but all of them were very large and very complex. And it was like a Java, an SAP, an Oracle. .NET and stuff like that. So, and uh, uh, it it would seem that there is no place for Drupal, for example, right? And for Magento, for for any PHP, open source here. Uh, but uh, everything in our world changed, and probably five years ago it was true, and there was no Drupal in this list uh, for sure. But today. Uh, we see uh, growing demand uh, on the Drupal, and Drupal, like you know, has broken into the development world on the wings of the wind, and uh, it become more popular and popular. And of course, I need to say that uh, the great job was done by Acquia, and they actually they continue doing this work by promoting Drupal, and of course, Drupal Association. So they do a really fantastic job. And a lot of kudos to Drupal community because uh, without those, you know, uh, thousands of people, the, this is all, you know, just impossible. Uh, but uh, today we see the trends and uh, large organization considering Drupal as their preferred platform more and more. And as we uh, were working with a uh, large organization for, for the long time, we decided to move into Drupal a number of years ago as well, and we see the strands. So um, our clients, are, you know, our key clients are Fortune 500 clients, and this is a really, really large organization. They are well known. They are, you know, um, they are just you know uh, celebrated leaders in their domains in their area in their business and they uh, um, what is important to know about them and it's pre pretty obvious they have so impressive revenue and turnover and this is the the whole you know the story um, a lot of people working in this organization they are pretty you know well structured but there are a lot of things happening all around it's just you know the any of this organization can be considered in a small world with a whole infrastructure inside and so on. So uh, for us, it's a great opportunity to work with such organization from one perspective, but from other perspective, it's a big ch challenge. And talking about uh, Fortune 500 companies, from, you know, at the first glance, it may look that it's just the companies, and what they need, actually, it's, uh, uh, they need time to market. They need quality. They need robust solutions, right? So it's pretty, pretty obvious, and it's true. And also, it's, I can add that uh, they are very focused on uh, innovation because it's essential, essential of their na nature. But uh, from the other point uh, of view, we should, you know, we should notice that uh, there is a lot of money, uh, stock price and of course leadership. And as all these companies trying to be on the top every time, the uh, cost of commitment is very high. And uh, if, you know, in small organization, you can fail something, you say, hey, I failed this time, I, I'm going to, re to redo it in another way. Here, someone can lose his job. His good place, his good workplace, just can be, you know, lost because of fail. And uh, uh, there are also a few, few interesting things and which are very di pretty different from the small and medium businesses, which I would like to talk as well. So 
the first thing uh, we see and we, we face when we are working with large organization is vendor management office. And this is, you know, a department, a group of people which actually make a decision who is eligible to work with the with this company within this organization, who are not. And, uh, you know, from organization to organization, power and responsibilities of vendor management office can vary. But uh, in most cases, they still define the role of the game. And uh, beside the, the fact that they, you know, define the rules, they are watching you. They are watching you every time. They get in your feed, feedback about your job. They are talking to people. And uh, they are talking to you as well, and they're providing you feedback. And you, ever, you, you can never be relaxed because they are watching you every time. And this is important for them because they, uh, if they consider you as a partner and would like you to work on their solution, it means they have some level of trust. But in, in the same time, it, feel it, it, <coughs> it uh, uh, means that their business depends on you. And they want to be very confident that uh, you are doing well. You're doing your job pretty well. And uh, the cost of mistake, next uh, RFP, you won't get. You just won't be invited. And uh, you will do ma many mistakes. You will be out of the game. And that's it. The, the rule is pretty strict and straightforward. Um, the second important thing to understand uh, that uh, all big corporations or big organization have already their environment. And saying environment, I mean they have own processes, they have own servers, they have own solution architects, and they have all, own engineers. And uh, what is important here that also they have own strategy and own philosophy, how to build their business, how to build their software which helps business. And uh, um, this is uh, actually essential, which, you know, Sometimes when we face with small, medium business, we can come to them and they ask them to build a website, for example. And no matter if it's big or small, they're just asking you. And they can't really evaluate uh, how professional you are. And they can't evaluate it uh, from a technical perspective. They just, you know, level of their professionalism in, uh, in IT is pretty limited. <coughs> These organizations are another story. They can uh, evaluate everything, and you probably can build a good solution, but it just don't, rely, don't align uh, with their philosophy, and it won't work for, for both parties. And this is important. And talking about own environment, it means you have to be flexible every time. And you can't just you know, act in one way and think that you know it every time will bring you to success. No, it's uh, just important every time to understand what needs uh, business have has and uh, what I can do to do better. So you every time you should be flexible. Every time you should adapt. Um, and uh, as I said, they have own environment, own engineers, own architects, and it means actually that they can design and build quite everything they want. They have enough skills for that. Uh, the problem is that they often has lack of scalability, of capacity of engineers, which can really help them to meet time to market. And this is how it happens. Uh, actually, you know, this um, uh, combination of time to market and uh, uh, and uh, you know this. So it, it leads sometimes to requests such, hey, I need a team of 10 developers, of 5 QA, some, 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 something like that, yeah, and uh, project manager and business analyst in two weeks. And yeah, and, and it's true. And uh, in full accordance with uh, Murphy's Law, um, we, we get such requests, some, in a time. And uh, both are important because uh, both customers are important, and they're important for us, they're important for customers, you have to deal with it. We can prepare for that. But what we really can do, uh, we keep bench. We, we call it bench, so we keep some people without the projects every time in order to, um, you know, to handle such requests. This is very important for, for, for us. And talking about scalability, 
uh, this is not just, you know, if we talk about, you know, building website, what, what is needed to build Drupal website? You need a good Drupal developer, right? But when we start talking about scalability and large projects, it uh, uh, leads to, you know, multiple roles and very, you know, it's range, ver it's variety uh, of roles and it includes everything. UX and design, it's, uh, of course, it's Drupal developers, business analysts and project managers, and testers, and so on and so forth, uh, leading to DevOps. So there is really great variety of skills uh, required. And uh, if you have a lack of the skills, uh, it may happen that you just can't deliver the, the whole scope uh, of the project. And uh, the next one, I think, uh, pretty important to, to large organization. It, it's most, actually, it's important to those who are working with large organization. They ac actually leverage as much as possible existing solutions, good, robust solutions. Uh, mostly it's the services, and uh, today we have a lot of cloud-based services, software as a service, and whatever. And uh, if they see that some of these services can you know, help them to achieve time to market, they use it. And for us, for Drupal developers, for example, for, for any kind of developers, it just means that we need to take care not about just Drupal implementation, but how our implementation will be integrated uh, in whole infrastructure. And if, for example, we are talking about media project, yeah? So media project, it's uh, quite everything about video. And most likely, there will, there will be video CMS, and we will have to integrate with video CMS like uh, the platform, like Brightcov, uh, we will need to integrate with analytics. It's not just like to put Google Analytics uh, JavaScript code in the bottom of the page. It means that we need to, you know, to uh, help to understand a behavior of user, and we will need to put all the codes in the proper places. We need to integrate with advertisement, and uh, of course, if it's highlighted project, it will be CDN, so content delivery network, so and so on and so forth. And uh, the whole infrastructure in the end of the day looks pretty huge. And this is very, very important to be ready to, you know, to integrate all these pieces. Uh, we have, you know, we perceive all our project, n not all, but most of them, as product development. And uh, it's... Look, it's, uh, it may be, you know, unique product and one of a kind, but all these organizations mostly looking on their property as a product. And what it means, it means that um, the development won't stop when you do a release, number one, and everyone is happy. It's just the first phase, and th this is the point when actually the game starts. And then we will have to continue to make a lot of deployments, a lot of improvements, because products will be updated, will be evolved, and so on and so forth. And uh, this is a long-term way, and this is months and even years of work, and uh, you should be prepared that the, the work will be not so you know, short-term, it will be mostly long-term, as soon as you will do successful with the, with the customer. Um, and... Uh, I'd say you will never walk alone. And it's not about Liverpool Football Club. It's uh, all about uh, your competitors. Because, you know, a uh, place under the sun is cool, but there are others who can take it. And uh, um, there will be, every time, other competitors in this game. And this is actually good, and I understand it why it happens, because just, you know, a few uh, large organizations can limit themselves to rely just on one partner. It's just risky for them. Uh, and uh, that's why every time there are many vendors in place and you will be every time competing with them. The, <coughs> the most, you know, probably difficult experience in my life was when we delivered uh, a pretty large project with another vendor. And uh, the, you know, the team was organized the way when we depended on the vendor, on another vendor. The vendor didn't meet, deadli meet deadlines. What does it mean for us? We didn't meet deadlines as well. And we were, you know, like, we were under pressure for the whole period of the project. We can't do anything with, with that. It's just a story when uh, our client in the end of the day say, hey, look, you have to do the work. What's wrong with you? And uh, we, we, we deal with that, and it was really, really difficult. Uh, and 
probably I would say it's obvious that uh, you know all Drupal service providers, no matter how large they are, it's, it can be five people Drupal shop, it can be a large two hundred uh, Drupal developers company. Uh, all of them are trying to do their best to do a great solution. It's it's obvious and it's uh, pretty normal. And uh, another story is uh, that. Uh, there are pretty a lot of those who can deliver it pretty well, who can do quality and so on. And uh, the winners are those who over deliver, who do a bit more every time. And it's, uh, for a large organization, it's a bit difficult. For a small organization, you can come up and say, hey, your homepage looks not so good and we, we need to improve it. And they can just believe you. Uh, here, to you know, to bring some new ideas to innovate, you have to understand the whole business, and this is about the main the main knowledge. Because one thing is technology knowledge when you understand technology very good and you know you know like how to build Drupal website. And completely another story when you first understand business of your customer, and then you do with technology what serve for this business, and uh, it's you know. It sometimes happens, and working with large organization, you're working just you know with a small part of this organization. It means that you just see the piece of the huge puzzle, and it, it may come you know it may happen that you will spend uh, years in order to understand business well, and then only you will able to bring value. Uh, let's focus a bit on the processes side, and in another important area, working with the large organization. And uh, um, I don't want to tell you about you know how, how cool Agile and Scrum, and I don't want uh, to tell that you know distributed uh, Scrum can be effective. This is true. We can do it. We we and you know we have our blueprint for delivering projects, and we actually you know use Scrum also you know Scrum practice as a base of our uh, you know blueprint, but. Uh, uh, here, a bit a different story. As I already said, uh, all organizations, quite all organizations, have uh, own processes. And it means that uh, uh, methodology and the process itself is important. But what it will be, you know, methodology, it's not so important because uh, you can't just use one blueprint and deliver in one way. In many times, you will have to adapt and integrate with existing practices and existing processes and this will be essential in order to you know to to, to build success in within the organization and um, we have to be prepared also to have not just you know knowledge of which artifacts we should have we should be ready to fulfill any gaps we will face on the road so as an example uh, we are uh, providing you know we have Atlassian stack Full, full configured and well set. And as soon as you know our customer provide us, you know their project management systems, we are using them. If they can't, we just saying, hey, we have already set it up, and we can work with the, with the, our environment as well. And it, everything should be ready because uh, here again, time to market is very important. And if we will spend two two weeks or months to select the proper project management and tracking system, it won't work. Um, and the process itself is r really, really important. But uh, it's probably less important when you're working with a small team. And your small team, you know, like they're sitting in one room, for example, right? Product owner somewhere around. And actually, you know, self-organization can be made on the fly. You can just, you know, use common sense. And uh, if something doesn't work for you, you just come to your neighbor and say, hey, let's do that this way. It will work better. OK, define it. And we continue in the different way. But um, this is completely the different story. And let's imagine that this is actually, oh, what's a pity? It was a map, a map of our world, right? So, and. Uh, uh, this is uh, five locations, uh, LA, Texas, New York, Minsk, and uh, uh, India. And this is a real example of how we were distributed. And there was 30 people working on one project. Many developers, both backend and front end, many testers. Uh, there was two scrum master, overall project manager, business analyst who defined requirements, 
and all of them were building one website. There was two vendors in this game, so, and uh, no matter which environment we use, and here it's very important to act as one team. Otherwise, we can't meet the deadlines, we can't meet, you know, we can't deliver a bus solution. So it should be kind of orchestra. And uh, what we should really do for that, uh, it's important to define roles and responsibilities. So who is doing what and when and why? And, and this is essential. We prefer to start even right from this place and uh, agree, you know, like on the bank, on the back. Then uh, there is another important area, uh, it's uh, requirements. And uh, when you have you know, like, like a small team, you can be pretty flexible with it. Here, you have about 20 developers. And if you don't give enough requirements to implement to 20 developers, someone lose money. And of course, deadline. So, and requirements uh, are very, you know, important in, the, in, in this case. And it's uh, very important to prepare well right before. It doesn't mean that we should outline all requirements uh, on the first phase. No, of course, no. We are doing it iteratively as we go. But uh, it's very important that next iteration, it starts and you have all requirements ready. Then uh, the next thing is planning. And I very uh, like uh, the quote of Benjamin Franklin, who said, "By failing to, by planning, sorry, <laughs> by failing to to plan, we have we are planning to fail." And uh, this this is great, and I, I really love it, and I really say it to to many of my colleagues and my customers. And we we do both uh, long term and short term plannings. So this is long-term planning uh, gives us uh, important information about how good we are performing and are we ready to meet you know, the, our deadlines. And uh, the second story is um, short-term planning. It's when really like in a Scrum team, team is committed to do some iteration work and uh, they are really preparing to implement the stuff. And when the iteration starts, they already know what they need to do and what they need to deliver. Uh, the next important area is uh, uh, transparency. So no matter how, much, how many vendors do you have, you have to be you know, as transparent as possible. And this is about trust. And it's not, you know, it's not happen every time. It's, uh, sometimes it's just not achievable at all. But as much transparency we have, uh, the more success we can achieve in the end of the day. Um, also, I'd like to, to say a couple of words about automation. When you have, you know, like 30 people uh, working all together, there are, you know, in any project there is some routine. And if you will, you know, work one year and, uh, you know, you will spend, for example, I don't know, one day to deploy something, you will, uh, you will lose a lot of money. And this is where we are trying to automate everything what is possible to automate. And, and again, it's essential. This helps actually developers and engineers focus on really challenging tasks from one perspective. From second perspective, it's really, you know, uh, can increase our velocity of delivery. And the latest things, I uh, think, which uh, will be here, you know, essential, I would say, uh, this is communication. There will be a lot of communication. And uh, when we plan in this stuff, we should, you know, even allocate time. But that time will be spent for communication. But because when you have 30 people, 50 people working on one project, they have to communicate a lot. They have to be in full agreement and they under should understand what they are really doing and if everything goes well. Uh, I decided to add one more slide just, you know, a couple of days ago because uh, uh, I, had some, I had one more meeting where we discussed the testing. And um, I realized that when we're doing, you know, small projects, when we have a couple of developers and, you know, product owner around, uh, it might be not so important testing because the risk of failure is not so, so, so big. And then in the end of the day, you can every time fix the stuff, you know, later. And uh, also, uh, when you have uh, not so many people, they are really, you know, developing things much better. Because, you know, you can separate the task, 
you can easy go in step by step and implement good things. The other story when you have many, many people working all together and their work should be consolidated and we should be really, really confident that everything is working as we expect. And there is no any other way to achieve that, only uh, we can use testing. Uh, and uh, by testing, it means uh, free area of testing. It's uh, functional testing where we're doing everything manually, checking how it works. The second thing, it's automation, and it uh, helps us to minimize regression testing efforts. And the third thing, of course, it's performance, because if your uh, website, after you will build it, will not perform, it will be, you know, a pity story for all the parties. And uh, it's uh, will be, you know, some, it, sometimes it sounds ridiculous, but uh, we are locating from 30 to 50 percent of development efforts for testing. So it's a, it's a big number, but it's really what gives us uh, full confidence that we are uh, delivering the good quality and robust solution. And in the end of the day, if you're lucky and uh, you did a great job and you can have the second, third, fourth project within the one organization. And this is the good time when we can start bringing a bit more value uh, to the project, to, to the organization. So what we actually do, we allocate in, uh, we call it delivery manager. It's kind of program manager, but uh, it's important to have technical experience and a good business focus because this uh, person will be responsible for uh, setting up the processes, moving all the project inconsistency, and also he should understand the business and help business moving forward. This is uh, essential. And also this, you know, multiple projects for one organization, they can be, you know, completely different story and it's probably not the case. But sometimes it happened that we are starting uh, doing multiple projects which are depends one on each other. And uh, this is the time where we're trying to negotiate with customer that some level of decisions we will make internally. Instead of going every one project to each, to, to, to their product owners, we are trying to agree in the in the in the bottom within our teams and then come up with a solution. This is how we minimize efforts. And uh, this is the third and the last area of uh, uh, I wanted to talk. Um, and you know we have achieved such a success just due because of people we are working with. And this is uh, all about uh, mostly about people. Uh, every time working with a large organization, we, we have a huge demand. We have a huge demand for, you know, for many organizations to, you know, to provide more and more, uh, to deliver more projects, and to deliver more projects, we need more people. What to do when we need to scale? And, uh, and I was on Business Summit, and I hear the, you know, the pain that there are so few uh, good Drupal developers, how to grow if there are no good de Drupal developers. So um, we can't clone them, right? <laughs> so far. Uh, we even, you know, we, we are not in farm and we can't, you know, have people, you know, like in, 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 uh, in 10 or 20 in just in one year. But what we can really do in partnering with universities, of course we are hiring. This is, this is essential and this is a pretty common approach. But the other, you know, the story is more strategic. So we are starting, you know, we are doing pretty close partnerships with the universities. And we wanted to identify talents right there. We're, doing, we're preparing courses, we're doing training, and uh, we come to our, in our universities and see the people who is attending there. And right there, we are trying to identify who is the talent. And those talented are proposed to join our company and continue educational process within the organization. So the next level of the, uh, of the educational process within the organization, when people join the so-called training labs and we preparing the tasks with the projects and the materials, which very align it to production needs. And this is uh, every time where um, where universities will be probably you know less competitive because they are preparing a lot of generic stuff they are providing a lot of generic stuff 
but they really don't know what is, you know, what require production. What's really important there, and I don't say that uh, university is not important, it's very important, but in the same time, uh, to prepare a good engineer, university is not enough. So we are pro providing them very, you know, alternative courses where you can, when they can start learning uh, the, you know, production needs. And uh, uh, of course it will be obvious, you will say, hey, it's just theory and without in practice it's, uh, you know, doesn't make any sense. And uh, this is true and we are starting to, you know, involve our junior developers in the smaller projects which are pretty simple or for smaller tasks which are also pretty simple. And uh, the important thing here that there should be enough senior capacity to help them not to fail or to predict fail in advance. Because even doing small project doesn't mean we want to fail. We want to good delivery in, in every project we are doing. So this, is, this will require a uh, capacity of uh, senior engineers who will be working with the, with the, with the uh, junior staff. <laughs> Thank you. It was romantic. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, like, uh, it's uh, passing time and uh, people are getting more experience and they getting well prepared for more challenging and challenging work and we are trying to provide them. And this is, this is where managerial capacity is important. It's important to see if this, uh, this, you know, specific developer can jump on the next level and start a bit more, uh, doing a bit more. And uh, in a couple of years, those, you know, students and juniors become developers who are doing pretty good stuff on pretty important projects for the large organization. And this is doable and we, uh, you know, accomplished it many times and we were, were succeeded in it. Um, uh, this is, you know, um, this is pretty high level and this is completely impossible without some tools and practices uh, which we also use inside the organization. And the first thing, uh, it's kind of aqueous certification for uh, Drupal developers, which we started to do a bit early even the Acquia. So we have our own position ranking and we have uh, defined five levels of Drupal engineers. We outlined uh, quite, you know, all the skills they important for us. And uh, there, are the, there are guys who prepared even tasks uh, which can help to, you know, to learn some important topic. Um, and uh, we, you know, we use it pretty much. And this, everything is combined in matrices and they contains, you know, PHP topics, databases, front end, uh, and of course Drupal itself and a lot, a lot more. And this is how we uh, evaluate our engineers and help them to show the road, where they should go, what they should learn in order to achieve their success. They are usually pretty young and it's, um, usually they are pretty motivated to build their IT career and uh, this is very helpful for them and also it's kind of automation for us. So we just, you know, t we don't do this matrix every time. We already have a set of questions important. We're trying to understand what they already know and what not. And the second important thing is mentoring programs, which we are employed to work with people strategically. So, okay, this is on the, on the previous slide, it was just a matrix, right? And what you can do is matrix, nothing without, you know, partnership with the senior guys who really can, will able to help you and to, to you know, to go on through this road. And, uh, the feedback from senior engineers are very important. So we are trying to, you know, to allocate engineering seniors guys for juniors and they, they get feedback faster and they can improve faster and they can avoid some pitfalls on their road. Uh, this is a uh, really, really great thing. And we actually use this uh, mentoring programs not only for uh, yesterday students. We also, our newcomer, you know, they are joining our company and sometimes they have like pretty solid experience in certain areas but we, uh, but they can, you know, have a gaps and this mentoring programs also helping them to fulfill these gaps and uh, we know already what, what we want to them and they know what we are looking for. 
Um, this is another great practice, actually, and uh, working with large organizations, uh, you know, every quite every customer wants, you know, as we are very transparent, they quite see everything what happens within the teams, uh, which works for, for their products, for their projects. And also they, you know, from time to time, you can spend, you know, half a year working with uh, some people, and you already, you know, you know them, you know how to act, and you want to work, to continue working with them for, you know, for, for a long time. But uh, we shouldn't forget we deal with people. And someone can get sick, someone can, you know, just leave the company, someone can uh, just get tired for, of the project, because the projects are long term, and you can just, you know, if there are a lot of routine, you can, you know, just uh, doing, 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 and then what? And you need to, you want to grow. And having, you know, all these practices, we have pretty, pretty, you know, really strong engineering culture within the company. They all want to want to achieve something more every time. And this is where succession planning helps us. We are trying to identify replacements for our key people in advance. We are trying to foresee when the certain, you know, engineer will get, will get tired on the project and will have, you know, different plans. And we need to provide replacement as fast as possible because, um, of course, it's great to have, you know, the stable team and we are doing our best to have this team stable. But in the same time, uh, the more important, it's a business and business continuity. And this is how we achieve in business continuity on our way. Um, and uh, also, I hope, you know, everyone agree that a person can't know everything. It's just impossible. And uh, uh, if, if one can't, a lot, you know, all, all together we can. And uh, this is where some years ago we came up with, uh, with a solution which really, really helpful. We are, as we are a pretty big company, we try to accumulate our experience, our knowledge, in so-called competency centers and internal communities. The places where the people can share their experience from one side and help each other from other side. So, and let's imagine that we are doing some, you know, mission critical project and some, you know, developer face, you know, for example, integration with, you know, some system and he never did this work before. So he can just, you know, spend a lot of time trying to understand how to integrate with it. And, uh, you know, but from other point, he can just, you know, write in the chat or write email and say, hey, guys, who has experience with that? And there will be every time at least a couple people who has experience and ready to help and come to uh, with advice, with piece of advice or, or whatever. And they can also say, hey, I tried some time, you know, some time before to do that stuff. Don't go this way. Go that way. That's really great, and this really helps us to not lose time in, from one perspective and also helps to deliver in the end of the day from the second perspective. And uh, this is, you know, I tried it, uh, it to make, you know, to in interesting, but it's still very high level. And uh, the, the topic of working with large enterprises is really huge as, <laughs> and large as, as the enterprises. But uh, again, I think this, uh, these things I just described are pretty important. And uh, they can also serve not only for the large enterprises. Uh, every, everything here can serve even from small and medium businesses. And, and trying to summarize uh, what I just said and just bring value to your customer. Just you know, try to understand a bit more about their business and about what they are trying to do and not just you know, providing them Drupal, Drupal, Drupal. And Drupal is really great. It's really providing a lot of things, and we're considering this platform for many things. But uh, beside the Drupal, there is a business which, you know, Drupal serves for business, and we need to understand business first and technology the second. And uh, in order to work with large-scale organization, we, we need to be, to be ready for scale. And this is essential because uh, they, they can't, you know, just forget about time to market. They have own competition, and this competition, you know, really, really big and they want to be you know as fast as possible uh, 
be flexible. All large organizations will provide you different environments to work, and they, they, they never will be similar. And uh, even within organization, you can see absolutely different processes, different people, and different ways of implementation, certain things. But uh, it just requires to be as flexible as possible and to know a lot of things, you know, like you're a project manager, you are doing the projects. It means that you have to know a lot about project management tools and not just, you know, I'm doing r rally and that's it. And uh, the last but really not the least is care about your team. And saying about care about the team, you know, help them grow, help them to be professional as much as possible. And um, this is, I believe, you know, it's all, it, it's business, but it's all about people. The people build Drupal. Drupal community is, is people, and people helps us to, you know, to make our business successful, and in the end of the day, they help our clients. So people are very important and essential here. Um, thank you. So I think it's a good time for questions, if you have any. Okay, so we are trying to not, uh, to avoid, you know, like, uh, so stuff in the projects, we are trying to consider as less locations as possible, but sometimes the distribution can happen. So, but no matter which locations are in place and how many, there will be, you know, if we have large account, you know, large client we are working with, there will be a couple of person uh, responsible for uh, the client for for the work for the whole work with client there will be on site person we call it account or engagement manager who will be uh, working right with the client on his field and from the other perspective in the delivery center there will be one person responsible for delivery so he defines the processes he look that you know for for the people for the team for the you know all implementation monitoring of the projects, he defines this relationship between the project and help them to you know to work all together efficiently. Uh, th this is you know pretty high level. So sometimes we dedicate not only um, you know so-called delivery manager or program manager, we dedicate also technical lead if it's you know. Uh, there is a primary technology in all projects. It's important to have someone who accumulate the knowledge and can, you know, uh, help to start, for example, project, right, to resolve some issues which may happen in, in, in the end of the day. And that's, that's you know, from the a bit high level, but how it works. So uh, when I said about sm small teams, uh, I didn't I, I didn't mean that we don't use uh, testing for small projects. We still do testing, and uh, but uh, I know that still even in large organization you can face some departments which just deliver code and and, uh, and that's it. They don't test it, and uh, it's good when you, so, you know, your team is so organized and so senior enough, so they deliver a good quality. In the end of the day, if you will look a bit closer to the product, it will, you know, it. Yeah, I agree. So, but uh, talking about, you know, probably difference between small and medium businesses and large organization, I believe the key difference in the ratio of uh, testing efforts. And in small project ratio can be pretty small, it can be 10%, but here it can be even 50%. And, uh, you know, when you're doing, you know, 
one of our project was uh, multi-site projects, uh, multi-site project with responsive web design for multiple brands. So it was, you know, like uh, a huge effort to test everything on different devices, and we consider it only, you know, uh, devices, native devices, not any emulators and so on. It's great, great amount of work. Okay. Yeah, it's every time happens. So from I will start from the end. So from the cultural perspective, uh, we are educating our our staff to you know with the uh, some specifics of different cultures, the cultures where you know we are working in of areas where we have a business. So this is the one thing, and uh, you know even if you spend half a year working with uh, United States, for example, customer you will learn a bit about how they do this stuff. Also, you know, people are traveling a lot, and that's why they actually have a chance to, you know, to come in the office of, the, of their client and to see how it works inside. So uh, talking about, you know, distribution, and uh, this is uh, why I said that the process is actually very important. So when you define the rules, how you collaborate, because that's completely right. If you don't agree on some point, you can, because of uh, difference in time zone, you can lose a whole day just to fix small bug, just because you don't know feedback, for example, right? And this is essential to agree, and for engineers, which we have, it's very important to understand that there is someone depending on you in other time zone, another city, and he is, you know, he will be blocked if you will fail. So this is, you know, people when they start working on this project, they have, you know, mentor mentoring, and we are looking closer to them. When they grew up, they, uh, you know, they just have it like a habit. They they already know this environment and understand that um, everything is important here. This is how it happened. Sometimes naturally, but initially we invest in in, in order to you know to make this everything works. And here's why the process is important because one thing is one developer will be blocked. The bad thing it will be blocked ten developers. This is you know this is just impossible. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and uh, if you want to continue with this conversation with me for, for some reason, I will be here in uh, our booth uh, 310 uh, in exhibition hall uh, to today and tomorrow. And thank you again.